His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Ghadibia the heads of Maatim and members of the Husseiniya processions, headed by the head of Madin Maatim, Brahim Mansour Al Mansour, who expressed thanks and appreciation for the government's efforts in supporting religious occasions and places of worship and for providing facilitations for the Ashura, or Ashura season every year. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of strengthening communication between society members. He added that the situation the kingdom has faced proved the people's patriotism to their country, leadership and society, stressing his support to all efforts aiming at preserving the country's unity, growth and advancement. He noted the national role of the people of Bahrain, asserting that the strength of the Bahraini society lies in the solidarity of its members, which made the kingdom a model in coexistence. His Royal Highness expressed pleasure in holding the meeting, which reflects the value of communication in the Bahraini society, thanking the guests for serving the community. He asserted that the government's keenness in providing all the requirements for the Muharram month and Ashura. His Royal Highness hailed the efforts of the heads of Matims in reviving religious seasons and organizing their rights in cooperation with the government authorities. He stressed that maintaining security and stability is a shared responsibility. He stated his keenness on maintaining the value of communication and enhancing national cohesion and on exerting further efforts to continue the kingdom's development march. He asserted that the unique pattern of relations that prevails in the Bahraini society has contributed to strengthening patriotism. His Royal Highness noted that the kingdom throughout history has embodied a mixture of cultural diversity that is based on tolerance and coexistence between the various categories of society, stressing the need for upholding unity and condemning division. For his part, Ghazi Abdel Mahsin delivered a speech on behalf of the guests in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his constant support to religious occasions including Ashura. He affirmed that His Royal Highness's support reflects the values of peaceful coexistence in the kingdom. He also noted that Bahrain under the guidance of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, will remain united and will continue to the March of Development. For their part, the heads of Maatims and members of the Husseiniya processions valued the support of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister for Religious Institutions, as well as the government's efforts to ensure religious freedom. <laughs> من أجل إنجاحها ومن أجل أن تظهر بالشكل الذي يليق بهذه الأرض التي تحمل سمة التسامح والتعايش بين جميع فئاتها يقودها في ذلك نهج آل خليفة الكرام الذين أخذوا على عاتقه أمانة استمرار هذه المواكب الحسينية أمانة ورثوها وصالوها وخلدوها وهي أمانة عجزت عن حملها الجبال الرواسي فصانها الرجال وتوارثتها الأجيال صاحب السمو وكما حمل لكم هذا الجمع الطيب السلام والتحية من الأحبة فإنني أحمل لسموكم كذلك تحيات أصحاب السماحة العلماء الأجلاء الذين قدروا رعايتكم وحرصكم على كل ما من شأنه الحفاظ على موسم عاشوراء الإمام الحسين عليه السلام فآمال البحرين معقودة بحكمتكم حاضرا ومستقبلا فشعبكم يا صاحب السمو يسيرون خلف عباءته وما تمثلونه في بيت الحكم العريق الضارب في الجذور على هذه الأرض الطيبة وكما ينظر أصحاب السماحة العلماء إلى جهود سموكم في مجال العمل الوطني نظرة الإعجاب فإنهم يتابعون كذلك مجلسكم بكل فخر بما يتصدره 
من عبارات الثقة بشعبكم وبث روح المحبة وإعلاء للكلمة الجامعة وهذا ليس بغريب على باني مجد الوطن عندما وضع أسس نهضته وليس غريبا عليه الآن وهو يسعى إلى أسمى هدف وهو الحفاظ على بيضة البلد من أن تتعرض لأي شرخ يهدد وجودها لا سمح الله صاحب السمو وصية أخرى حملونا إياها بأن نحمل دوما معان الحب والولاء والإخلاص لسموكم والسير خلفكم وخلف نهجكم السامي حماية لتراب هذا الوطن صاحب السمو أيها الحكيم ها أنت قلتها بل عملت بها عندما حرصت على الدعوة إلى رص الصفوف إيمانا منك بضرورة الحفاظ على جمع الكلمة فقد أسمعتها القاصي والداني حين جعلت الجميع متوحدين خلف قيادة حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك مملكة البحرين المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه وأنت أوله وبمعية صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد الأمين فبحكمة الرجال تبنى الأوطان ويعمر الزمان فمعكم يكتمل العقد وبكم تتجمل الأعناق صاحب السمو ها قد جاءت هذه الوفود مرة أخرى لمجلسكم العام مستبشرة بهذا اللقاء لتتعرف على أصالة الرجال حين يصدقون وعلى وعدهم حين يقررون وعلى صدقهم حين يبادرون وعلى سريرتهم حينما يعلنون وقد جاءت هذه الجموع يا صاحب السمو حاملة طهر الأرض ووعد الصدق وكنوز ودائع الأوطان حاملة روحا أصفى وولها أنقى وولاء أوفى فهذه الجموع أتت معلنة وقوفها خلف نهجكم الحكيم الذي حفظ البحر من كل سوء أريد بها بفضل توحد الكلمة التي ما فتئتم تدعون إليها في مجلسكم العامر هذا وتسمعونها للقاصي والداري بأن البحرين عصية على أعدائها ما دمتم يا صاحب السمو قائمين على حمايتها حافظين للأمانة التي تسلمتموها من لدن حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, received a commemorative shield for the, from the head of al Mandub Matam in recognition of His Royal Highness's contributions to the development of the kingdom. Under the patronage of the Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Commander of the Royal Guard Special Force, His Highness Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a seminar of combating terrorism strategies was held today in BDF Officers Club in cooperation with the European Union Institution for Security Studies. The seminar comes following the directives of the General Command of the BDF, headed by the BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser delivered the following speech. This is 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. يسرني أن أرحب بكم في افتتاح أدوارتكم المتخصصة حول مكافحة التهديدات الإرهابية بحضور نخبة متميزة وارهية مزجة بين العزيمة العسكرية والفكرة الاستراتيجية. وهي فرصة مواتية لإيجاد مساحة مشتركة وشراكة نوعية في هدف بناء القدرات والمهارات وتبادل الأفكار والروح حول السبل الكثيرة لمواجهة هذا الخطر والإسهام في حماية الأمن المستدام والقيم الأصيلة وبداية أتوجه بتحية إجلال واعتزاز إلى قوة دفاع البحرين الباسلة التي سطرت صفحات الناس عن البطولات والتحقيات في سجل تاريخنا الوطني وتنهض بمسؤولياتها الوطنية الإنسانية بكل كفاءة واقتدار كما أفتخر بانتمائي هذه المؤسسة الرائدة التي تأسست وتطورت وتكونت فكرة وتنسيح عنوان تدريبا ومضمونا بفضل رعاية السامية والدائمة من لدن سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة عاهل البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه. ولا شك أن الأدوات والمنصات المتخصصة تقدم لصانع القرار والجهات المعنية خيارات استراتيجية ورؤى واقعية من شأنها تعزيز فرص المقاية من هذه الأرض وتدفع في اتجاه نسق دولي أكثر تماسكا وفعالية للقضايا عليها. The seminar organized by the Royal Guard will be held for a few days. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, hailed the effective participation in the first week of the Maritime Heritage held for the Sheikh Hamad bin Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa's Cup and organized by the Bahrain Inherited Traditional Sports Committee. His Highness noted that the inauguration of the season witnesses a remarkable participation of Bahraini youth which reflected their keenness and interest in supporting and reviving maritime heritage. He added that the event gives the participants the opportunity to learn about maritime heritage and the terms used in that field. His Highness invited all youths of various ages to participate in the competitions that will contribute to encouraging them to gain more knowledge on the types of maritime heritage and will prepare them to shoulder the responsibility of documenting this heritage. He hailed parents' role in encouraging their children to participate in the competition. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed bin Rashid Zayani, along with Electricity and Water Affairs Minister Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza, inaugurated today the Automotive Industry Conference Innovation in Sustainable Mobility at Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. More in this report by Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. The interest for sustainable mobility has been steadily increasing in the region and many countries are aiming to increase the uptake of alternate energy vehicles in their jurisdictions or studying the possibilities of converting their transport sector into a sustainable and energy efficient one. In future we'll be going more and more to the clean energy. The clean energy could be a solar energy or electric energy. And many countries now in Europe have announced, like Britain and France, that by the year 2030, they will ban fossil fuel, which is oil and gas or petrol and diesel in cars. Innovation in sustainable mobility reflects the interest of the Kingdom of Bahrain in keeping pace with the rapid evolution in the automotive industry and the relevant international legislation and conventions governing the mobility of future to be safe, secure, clean, smart and efficient. We made this conference to gather together all the stakeholders, all the relevant parties, the ministries, in order to address all the concerns they have, their questions, you know, each one from his point of view, um, to make everything ready 
in order to have these cars in Bahrain. Issuing this uh, regulation and depending on the global requirements uh, regarding the safety of motor vehicles uh, and also the uh, other requirements that needed for such car. Uh, we will start certification, inshallah, in the uh, model year of 2021. With an objective to reduce the country's carbon footprint and develop a sustainable economy, the Kingdom of Bahrain is set to announce a series of initiatives that will actively promote the use of eco-friendly vehicles in the Kingdom. There's been lots of crossroads, lots of junctions where we've been looking at alternative fuels, alternative modes of power, but nobody has really been able to come up with a viable alternative to the internal combustion engine. Where we are at the moment is that battery technology, other fuel cell technologies like hydrogen, for example, they've grown to such an extent now that they are becoming viable. So we need to have a look at what is the future, which direction are we going to go in. The conference discusses the paradigm shift that the transport sector within the kingdom is set to witness. It's an ideal platform for all related stakeholders including automotive manufacturers, distributors, automotive solution providers, infrastructure developers, automotive and mobility consultants and researchers to get together and understand Bahrain government's vision towards sustainable mobility and what impact it will have on the future landscape of Bahrain. Bahrain automotive industry. Bahrain is keeping pace with the rapid evolution of the automotive industry through its first conference on innovation and sustainable mobility. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffour. The Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Hisham bin Mohammed Al Jodar, hailed the role of the Chairman of the Board of Directors of Gravity Indoor Skydiving, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, which contributed to continuing the preparation for the Kingdom's hosting of the third Indoor Free Flight World Championship for the first time in Bahrain and the Middle East, organized by Gravity Indoor Skydiving in cooperation with Bahrain Air Sports Federation. Al Jodar stated that the Kingdom's hosting of the championship will contribute to enhance the kingdom's status on the world sports map and will be a platform to promote the kingdom in world events. He noted that the kingdom's hosting of the championship will also support its effort to promote the sport among Bahraini youth, affirming that the championship represents a new launch for the sport in the kingdom. He asserted the keenness of the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs on supporting the organizing committee of the championship to provide the various success factors to host the event. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs held an introductory meeting for Arab ambassadors accredited to the Kingdom of Bahrain to shed light on Bahrain's candidacy for the membership for the Human Rights Council of the United Nations in Geneva for the periods of 2019 till 2021. The Assistant Foreign Minister Abdullah bin Faisal Al Jabur Al Dosiri welcomed the attendees, giving a detailed explanation on the candidacy of the Kingdom of Bahrain for the membership of the United Nations Human Rights Council for the period from 2019 to 20. 2021 in the election scheduled for October 2018 in New York City. He also highlighted the Kingdom's efforts and achievements, its programs for candidacy for the membership, in addition to the voluntary pledges submitted by the Kingdom of Bahrain for the membership of the Council in order to protect and promote human rights regionally and internationally. The Assistant Foreign Minister affirmed that the law and constitution of the Kingdom is based on respecting human rights and fundamental freedoms to contribute to the development of human rights in the Kingdom of Bahrain. It should be noted that another meeting will be held for foreign ambassadors accredited to the Kingdom on Tuesday, September 4, 2018. Gulf Air, the national carrier of the Kingdom of Bahrain, has launched a program in cooperation with the Royal Charity Organization to allow its passengers to contribute through the donation of various paper and metal coins on their flights. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Tourism and Chairman of Gulf Air, Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani, and the Secretary General of the Royal Charity Organization, Dr. Mustafa Sayed, inaugurated the project during the Gulf Air flight to London and invited passengers to contribute to this charitable project. For his part, Dr. Mustafa Sayed thanked the Ministry of the Minister of Industry, Trade and Tourism and Chairman of Gulf Air for his contribution in supporting charitable and humanitarian work in the kingdom. He said that this cooperation comes within the Social Responsibility Partnership Program to provide support for the children of the organization and to give opportunities to contribute to the care of orphans where the donation will be allocated to support health and education programs for the families of the organization.